The dinosaurs are all dead, right? One of the many dinosaur myths that almost no one ever thinks about is that dinosaurs are extinct. The reason no one ever thinks about this myth, nor in the way that I mean to talk about it now, is because everyone takes it for granted. The Mesozoic is an era of time, a giant span of time that can be further divided into periods. Some of you may be more familiar with them, Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. Everyone knows that this era was the age of reptiles, the time of the dinosaurs. No dinos before the Mesozoic, boom. No dinos after the Mesozoic. After all, we don't have Tyrannosauruses or Triceratopses walking around with us today, right? We have lions, tigers, and elephants. So what gives? Why is it a myth that the dinosaurs went extinct? Am I a young Earth creationist saying that dinosaurs survived the mass extinction in the Congo? <laughs> no, not at all. Mokele and Bembe is absolute hokum. I'm talking about the birds. Contrary to some loud minority of disgraced scientists or misled ornithologists or the unscrupulously religious, birds are literally just dinosaurs. They belong to the theropod group within the dinosauria proper. This means that dinosaurs, in fact, never went extinct and are alive with us today, quite successfully too. Of course, birds are a distinct group, a very special and specialized group of dinosaurs. This brought up a problem. When we talk about the giant sauropods, horned dinosaurs, and meat eaters of the Mesozoic, do we still call them dinosaurs? Do we call birds dinosaurs now? That could get a little complicated when we have a conversation or even a scientific paper. Easy peasy. Birds are avian dinosaurs because the bird group is the aves. Dinosaurs are non-avian dinosaurs because they are not birds. Simple as. I often still refer to non-bird dinosaurs as dinosaurs and birds as birds because I'm confident that most people understand the connection between dinosaurs and birds, but also understand that I am referring to non-avian dinosaurs when I just say dinosaurs, and avian dinosaurs when I say birds. Ironically enough, the idea that birds are just a funky group of dinosaurs is shockingly old. It appears shortly after the creation of the word dinosaur and the description of the dinosauria as an evolutionary group. A fossilized feather was found in 1860s Germany, and then the skeleton of Archaeopteryx was found, and both were seen to belong to a very birdy and reptilian animal. A lot of the bones within Archaeopteryx were remarkably similar to those found in the then new dinosaurs, Iguanodon, Megalosaurus, and Hylaeosaurus. It had fingies, toofers, and a bony tail like a reptile, but hollow bones, feathers, and a wishbone like a bird. The transitional nature of this animal was clear as day. Then the early 1900s came around and everyone sort of shifted away from the idea. Not many transitional fossils were found after that, which probably made it easier for the original connection to sort of just fade away. Nazi paleontologist Othenio Abel and then Danish paleontologist Gerard Heilmann did some work on birds, with Heilmann publishing his research that dealt with anatomy, embryology, behavior, paleontology, and the evolution of birds. His work, originally written in Danish as Vor Nuverende Viden om Fuglenes of Stomne, was compiled, translated into English, and published in 1926 as The Origin of Birds. Like Darwin's bulldog, Thomas Henry Huxley, who had been adamant about the connection between birds and reptiles using Archaeopteryx, Haleman compared Archaeopteryx and other birds to an exhaustive list of prehistoric reptiles and also came to the conclusion that theropod dinosaurs like Compsognathus were the most similar. However, Haleman noted that birds had clavicles, or collarbones, fused to form a bone called the furcula, or wishbone. And while clavicles were known in more primitive reptiles, they had not yet been recognized in dinosaurs. Since he was a firm believer in an interpretation of Dalo's law that stated that evolution was not reversible, Hillman could not accept that clavicles were lost in dinosaurs and re-evolved in birds. He was therefore forced to rule out dinosaurs as bird ancestors and ascribed all of their similarities to convergent evolution. Hillman stated that bird ancestors would instead be found among the more primitive, fecodont grade of reptiles. 
Hailman's extremely thorough approach ensured that his book became a classic in the field, and its conclusions on bird origins, as with other topics, were accepted by nearly all evolutionary biologists for the next four decades. Clavicles are relatively delicate bones, and therefore in danger of being destroyed or at least damaged beyond recognition. Nevertheless, some fossil theropod clavicles had actually been excavated before Hailman wrote his book, but these had been misidentified. The absence of clavicles in dinosaurs became the orthodox view, despite the discovery of clavicles in the primitive theropod Segisaurus in 1936. The next report of clavicles in a dinosaur was in a Russian article in 1983. Contrary to what Haleman believed, paleontologists now accept that clavicles, and in most cases, ferculae, are a standard feature not just of theropods, but of saurischian dinosaurs. Up to late 2007, ossified ferculae, made of bone rather than cartilage, have been found in all types of theropods, except the most basal ones, Eoraptor and Herrerasaurus, both of which may actually be fungi types of early sauropods. Go figure. The original report of a furcula in the primitive theropod Segisaurus was confirmed by a re-examination in 2005. Joined, furcula-like clavicles have also been found in Massospondylus, an early Jurassic sauropodomorph. The tide began to turn against the Thecodont hypothesis after the 1964 discovery of a new theropod dinosaur in Montana. In 1969, this dinosaur was described and named Deinonychus by John Ostrom of Yale University. The next year, Ostrom redescribed a specimen of Pterodactylus in the Dutch Taylor Museum as another skeleton of Archaeopteryx. The specimen consisted mainly of a single wing, and its description made Ostrom aware of the similarities between the wrists of Archaeopteryx and Deinonychus. In 1972, British paleontologist Alec Walker hypothesized that birds arose not from thecodonts but from crocodile ancestors, like Sphenosuchus. Ostrom's work with both theropods and early birds led him to respond with a series of publications in the mid-1970s in which he laid out the many similarities between birds and theropod dinosaurs, resurrecting the ideas first put forth by Huxley over a century before. Ostrom's recognition of the dinosaurian ancestry of birds, along with other new ideas about dinosaur metabolism, activity levels, and parental care, began what is known as the Dinosaur Renaissance, which began in the 1970s and continues to this day. Ostrom's revelations also coincided with the increasing adoption of phylogenetic systematics, or cladistics, which began in the 1960s with the work of Willy Hennig. Cladistics is an exact method of arranging species based strictly on their evolutionary relationships, which are calculated by determining the evolutionary tree, implying the least number of changes in their anatomical characteristics. In the 1980s, cladistic methodology was applied to dinosaur phylogeny for the first time by Jacques Gauthier and others, showing unequivocally that birds were a derived group of theropod dinosaurs. Early analyses suggested that dromaeosaurid theropods, like Deinonychus, were particularly closely related to birds, a result that has been corroborated many times since. The early 1990s saw the discovery of spectacularly preserved bird fossils in several early Cretaceous geological formations in the northeastern Chinese province of Liaoning. In 1996, Chinese paleontologists described Cynoceropteryx as a new genus of bird from the Yixin Formation, but this animal was quickly recognized as a more basal theropod dinosaur closely related to Compsognathus. Surprisingly, its body was covered by long filamentous structures. These were dubbed protofeathers and considered homologous with the more advanced feathers of birds, although some scientists disagree with this assessment. Chinese and North American scientists described Caudipteryx and Protarchaeopteryx soon after. Based on skeletal features, these animals were non-avian dinosaurs, but their remains bore fully formed feathers closely resembling those of birds. Archaeoraptor, described without peer review in a 1999 issue of National Geographic, turned out to be a smuggled forgery, but legitimate remains continued to pour out of the Yixian, both legally and illegally. 
feathers or proto feathers have been found on a wide variety of theropods in the Ischian, and the discoveries of extremely bird like non avian dinosaurs, as well as non avian dinosaur like primitive birds, have almost entirely closed the morphological gap between non avian theropods and birds. Suffice it to say, no matter how much you may not like it, and no matter how weaselly you want to be, birds are literally just dinosaurs. No ifs, ands, or buts. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Elephant Tier patrons Abby Smith, Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Cherry Shaw, Chris Frampton, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Ed Peretz, Isaiah Garza, Jax the Hacks, Natty Cat, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus, Staniforth Hopkins, Steve Bradshaw, Thea Svensson, and Extraterrestrial. As well as my top S tier Tyrannosaurus patrons Admin, Antron, Aphid Kirby, Cyber, Dana Manchester, Danny Van Heck, Henry Brennan, Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Joshua Mana, Panic, Radio 404, Robert Kessler, Ruben Zachariah, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, and The Dogman.